Listening fill in the blanks. Let's start. But we live in changing times, and white bread is mindful of a worldwide decline in play, pointing out that over half the people in the world now live in cities. The opportunities for free play, which I experienced almost every day of my childhood, are becoming increasingly scarce, he says. Outdoor play is curtailed by perceptions of risk to do with traffic, as well as parents' increased wish to protect their children from being the victims of crime, and by the emphasis on, earlier is better, which is leading to greater competition in academic learning and schools. Whitebread's recent research has involved developing a play-based approach to supporting children's writing. Many primary school children find writing difficult, but we showed in a previous study that a playful stimulus was far more effective than an instructional one. Children wrote longer and better structured stories when they first played with dolls representing characters in the story. In the latest study, children first created their story with Lego Asterisk, with similar results. Many teachers commented that they had always previously had children saying they didn't know what to write about. With the Lego building, however, not a single child said this through the whole year of the project. Other possible routes have been offered, though, for Igor Novikov. Astrophysicist behind the 1980s theorem known as the self-consistency principle, time travel is possible within certain boundaries. Novikov argued that any event causing a paradox would have zero probability. It would be possible, however, to affect, rather than, change, historical outcomes if travelers avoided all inconsistencies. Averting the sinking of the Titanic, for example, would revoke any future imperative to stop it from sinking, it would be impossible. Saving selected passengers from the water and replacing them with realistic corpses would not be impossible, however, as the historical record would not be altered in any way. In Britain, there is a broadly similar belief in the existence of innate talent, but also an egalitarian sentiment which makes people queasy about the idea of investing resources in grooming intelligence. Teachers are often opposed to separate provision for the best-performing children, saying any extra help should go to stragglers. In 2002, in a bid to help the able while leaving intact the ban on most selection by ability in state schools, the government set up the National Academy for Gifted and Talented Youth. And in Japan, there is a widespread belief that all children are born with the same innate abilities and should, therefore, be treated alike. All are taught together, covering the same syllabus at the same rate until they finish compulsory schooling. Those who learn quickest are expected then to teach their classmates. In China, extra teaching is provided, but to a self-selected bunch. Children's palaces in big cities offer a huge range of after-school classes. Anyone can sign up, all that is asked is excellent attendance. Private schools are extortionately expensive, being as much as £18,000 a year at somewhere such as Harrow or Eton, where Princes William and Harry attended, and at least £8,000 a year almost everywhere else. There are many parents who are not wealthy or even comfortably off, but are willing to sacrifice a great deal in the cause of their children's schooling. It baffles many people as to why they need to spend such vast amounts when there are perfectly acceptable state schools that don't cost a penny. One father gave his reasoning for sending his son to a private school, if my son gets a 5% better chance of going to university then that may be the difference between success and failure. Research has shown that laughter is more than just a person's voice and movement and that it requires the coordination of many muscles throughout the body. Laughter also increases blood pressure and heart rate, changes breathing, reduces levels of certain neurochemicals, catecholamines, hormones, and provides a boost to dying immune system. Can laughter improve health? It may be a good way for people to relax, because muscle tension is reduced after laughing, 
Human tests have found some evidence that humorous videos and tapes can reduce feelings of pain, prevent negative stress reactions, and boost the brain's biological battle against infection. Researchers believe we process humor and laughter through a complex pathway of brain activity that encompasses three main brain components. In one new study, researchers used imaging equipment to photograph the brain activity of healthy volunteers while they underwent a side-splitting assignment of reading written jokes, viewing cartoons from the New Yorker magazine as well as The Far Side, and listening to digital recordings of laughter. Preliminary results indicate that the humor processing pathway includes parts of the frontal lobe brain area important for cognitive processing the supplementary motor area, important for movement. Seaports have been transformed by the advent of powered vessels, whose size and draft have increased. Many formerly important ports have become economically and physically less accessible as a result. Bypassed by most of their former enriching flow of exchange, they have become cultural and economic backwaters or have acquired the character of museums of the past. Examples of these are Charleston, Salem, Bristol, Plymouth, Surat, Gal, Malacca, Suchow, and a long list of earlier prominent port cities in Southeast Asia, Africa, and Latin America. Bricks are one of the oldest known building materials dating back to 7000 BCE. The oldest found were sun-dried mud bricks in southern Turkey, and these would have been standard in those days. Although sun-dried mud bricks worked reasonably well, especially in moderate climates, fired bricks were found to be more resistant to harsher weather conditions, and so fired bricks are much more reliable for use in permanent buildings. Fired brick are also useful in hotter climates, as they can absorb any heat generated throughout the day, and then release it at night.